Welcome to UPAO Wellness Wednesday for January 17th, 2024. Our topic today is financial wellness. My name is Carla Robinson. I'm the executive director of United Parks as one. I'm here again with Hajadina Corbin and her special guest. Hajadina is the United Parks as one wellness and well being navigator, and she's our guide for our wellness journey. Hajadina, so far, you and your guests have looked at spiritual wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness, community wellness, intellectual wellness, and occupational wellness. Today, we're looking at our last dimension of wellness, financial wellness. Let's get started. Yes, welcome in everyone. Yes, we're going to have a conversation with my guest, Sister Samira Abdul Alim, and she's going to talk to us about the money, the money, the financial wellness, our last dimension. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to just remind everyone about the all of the eight dimensions of wellness, which is our spiritual wellness, our emotional wellness, physical wellness, community environmental, intellectual, occupational, and finally, our financial wellness. I'm going to introduce to you Sister Samira abdul Alim. She is a regional vice president and financial advisor for Prime America, Prime, Prime America. She has been in this business for over 30 years, so she knows what she's talking about. So y'all listen real good. Sister Samira realized early on that people suffer financially due to lack of financial education and that most people don't plan to fail, but simply fail to plan. She utilizes high-tech financial tools to educate her clients and as financial coaching to help her clients achieve their financial goals. So we're going to dive right in, right, right in. The first question is, what is financial wellness? Sister Samira, and what does it look like? Okay. Well, financial wellness is actually the state of well-being in which you can comfortably manage your bills and expenses, mm. pay your bills, mm. weather unexpected financial emergencies, and plan for long-term financial goals, as uh, such as building uh, goals for college fund funding or saving for retirement. See, most people, they aren't doing that. But, and that's why I feel so good about what I do because this is what is needed, that, that financial wellness offers security, both in the, uh, the, you know, the present, it offers security, such as having control of your day-to-day, month-to-month expenses, right? And, and that's in the present day, but also in the future, having the capacity to absorb a financial shock. And then you have freedom of choice, along with financial wellness, because what it does, it lets you enjoy your life. See, when you have freedom of choice because of your, you have financial wellness, it determines where you live, what kind of food you eat, what kind of health care you have. Uh, it determines all of these things. And, you know, it, and that's what's key because most people are living paycheck to paycheck. So they can't do that. They can't have the kinds of vacations that they want and you know, live where they want and eat the kind of food that they want. And then for the uh, future, it helps, to, uh, you know, helps with the long-term financial goals that people have, that choice. You know, what, what, what do they want to have or they, you know, for, as far as college funding for their children or maybe you know, especially for their own retirement? How do they want their retirement to look? But they, people do have a choice. And a lot of times they don't, do not realize they have that choice. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Excellent points. I love how you started off by saying it's the ability to live comfortably, right? Comfortably and paying your your um, your day-to-day -day expenses and your bills. Okay, um, let's move on to the next question of how do... How, how do our attitudes about money affect our financial wellness? Uh, one of the things I was reading recently, and it says a healthy attitude toward money leads to financial security. And see, uh, a lot of people have these different attitudes. And what we find is 
depending on what kind of attitude you have is how well you do as far as your finances are concerned. So say for instance, uh, you probably heard of the ne there's negative attitudes towards money. You know, like money is all evil. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, uh, I want I think a negative attitude is I have, I, I will have to piece of the pie. You could have the whole pie. Why think about, you know, everything's so limited, you know? So people that have these kind of attitudes, that's a negative attitude and a negative mindset about money. Then you have people that are, you know, thinking very positively about money, believing that they deserve it, you know, mm. deserve to have money. You know, why should people think that they don't deserve it? But a lot of people do, and they feel that there's something wrong with having it. So those type of attitudes actually um, cause a lot of devastation financially for families. So people yeah. need, to, and they could correct that. They can correct the way that they think about money, especially when they realize the importance of knowing how money, one of the things we teach is, how do what how money works? See, most people don't have that education, and that's what I was talking about. Uh, you know, when I mentioned to you what I do, how money works is key. That's the education that people need to know about. They need to know, you know, the different concepts that uh, about money, because you know, say for instance, uh, they need to understand why do people need insurance? The insurance is protection. See, it replaces, if it's life insurance, it replaces income. Most people don't think about life insurance as replacing income. They just think it as it for final expenses. But see, if you're, if, you're, if you're raising a family and one of the breadwinners passes away, what happens mm -hmm. to that income is important. You, think, you realize that's key, right? Because how can they continue on without the income coming in? Mm -hmm. But that's the purpose of life insurance is to replace income. And then the same other, you know, the other protections that insurance gives, you know, you know, in case there's, you know, if you have a house, you need to have insurance, right? Yeah. You need health, you need insurance for your health. So that's, the, those are protection things that people need to have. So, so money is more than just paying bills. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so <laughs> right there, well, don't say no more. We're going, I'm going to ask you some more about that toward the end. Okay. okay. Because that's what a lot of people think, right? Uh huh. Okay. That's right. <laughs> what are some mindsets or approaches that can help foster financial wellness? Okay, actually, believing that you can have money, being having a positive attitude, uh, you know, uh, understanding the people that have a positive attitude or a positive mindset, uh, basically, they, they generally save more you know, because they understand the, per the importance of saving money. Uh, they manage their credit better. Uh, mm. They're able to give to others. A lot of people feel good about being able to give to others, having a financial impact on their on the community that they live in or their society, you know, because they have such a positive attitude about being able to have the money that they need, not only for themselves, but for, you know, being able to help other people as well. Okay. Thank you. So the last question, but we're going to kind of diverse to a couple of other points that you made a little later. How is financial wellness related to some of the other dimensions of wellness that we mentioned, like spiritual, emotional, physical, community, environmental, intellectual, and occupation? How does financial wellness play a role or connect those dimensions? I think one of the things, uh, you know, especially with occupational, let's, say, let's look at that, for example. Here you have an employer-employee relationships. Now, it affects the work environment if someone has a problem with their finances because a lot of times they may have to take off the work. They may be thinking more about those finances while they're working, so that's taking away. Uh, so those things, that's why it's important that employers take into account the fact that people need to have some kind of financial education to help them with that financial wellness that they need to achieve. And it makes such a difference for the, for, for the companies as well, because 
uh, one of the statistics I heard is that like if some if people take off a day based on, you know because of finances and things like that, that's costing the company money. You know, for each time they do that, it's like three hundred and plus dollars is costing them. So instead of em employees backing away from educating their employees, they should definitely be on board. And a lot more, a lot more companies are doing that. You know where they understand how important it is to because we do financial wellness wealth workshops for different companies and things like that and more and more are taking advantage of that mm -hmm. and that helps the employees you know, plan for their futures get up you know uh, it, it, it's less stressful for them it keeps employee employers on their jobs because you know if they're happy with their finances and you know that stress isn't there you know they feel that okay i can do this you know so mm -hmm. That's the importance. So a just a couple other questions that I, I have. You talked about, um, you mentioned how money works and we talked about, I had asked you, um, money is not just for paying bills, right? Um, there are other things that we can do with our money that enhances some of the other aspects of the wellness pieces that we talked about. And sometimes when people think about money and they think of investing, right. That's like, Oh, you know, um, they're not, they don't have the education for investing. But when you talk, when I think of money and I think of investing, I think of investing in not just the market stock markets or other companies, but self-investment, like learning about money. So how do you, how do you, what would you suggest people do to get started? if they're really interested in improving their financial wellness and removing the mindset that money is just about paying bills. That's all I got to do is work, come home, pay my bills. How do you, how do you change that mindset for people? Well, that's what I was saying that one of the keys is that, let me, can I back up this for a minute? Um, there's a statistic that we share with people. And it says out of 100 people retiring, like working from ages 25 to 65, majority are retiring broke. Over 50 plus percent are dependent, meaning that, you know, because as you know, Social Security is not, you know, you're working all your life and then all of a sudden you're just on Social Security. That's a big drop in income, right? Yes. If they haven't planned for their future and they haven't accumulated the money that they needed, to accumulate for that future, they're devastated. So over 50 plus percent of people are like that. And then another 40 plus percent are still working. And it's not, it's one thing to want to work, but to have to is because they haven't really had any plan for their retirement. So those are the problems. And so another thing that we found is that only 4% have actually become financially free or financially independent, where they have accumulated over a million in assets. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people think of hear that million and it like drives them crazy. They don't have any idea what that means or that they could even accomplish that. But just think of all the money that people make during their lifetime. They're making over a million, maybe sometimes two million during the course of that 25 to 65 years. But the problem is is that they never paid themselves first. They never thought about, you know, they pay, you know, they struggle every month paying their bills, but why not, why not pay yourself first? And see, one of the th things that we educate people about is we use an example. We say, for instance, uh, someone, do you think someone starting out as, you know, working, and let's say they're 25 years old and they're working on a job. Do you think if they knew that they could save maybe $50 a week to, to pay themselves first, that's $200 per month, and invest that money, by the time they're 65, they would have close to a million dollars. So just by understanding that, and people understand the, the, the importance of paying yourself first, they could accomplish the thing yes that's right a start. yes that's a huge start yeah and that's what we teach people and then you know and then we you know then some, sometimes i meet with people that of course are older than 25 
you know, and, and those, and, and we show them, well, well, this is what happens. You, you waited, but you had to start from wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And there's ways to do that. But see, you have to under, have that focus that, you know, have that uh, understanding the importance of planning for those long-term goals, okay? And you had mentioned, uh, you know, I not mentioned investing, and that's key because there's a difference between savings and investing. See, savings is like when someone puts money in a bank or a credit union or insurance company versus actually investing the money. Okay. And and then when we when we teach people that those institutions are actually um, they're the middlemen, they have our money, and then they say, Okay, I'm gonna guarantee you this. Right, and what where do you think banks are giving people? You know, when they put them in a savings account, a lot of times it's less than one percent, mm. right? But then, what does that bank do with that money? They turn around and they invest it, and we teach people to invest the same way that the banks do, okay. so that they can make those kind of returns versus getting the bank say, "I'm gonna guarantee you this," and making all the money on our money. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. This has been so informative and I look forward to um, connecting with you, okay. you know, and really, really, because um, that's one of my goals. This That's one of my goals this this um, year, 2024, is to really, I'm choosing three. three. I did three last year. I kind of fell short, but, you know, get a chance to do, do a do over. And mm -hmm. um, that's that's what. Um, that's one of my goals is really to get a hold on my finances. So sister Samira, I thank you. I thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and speak to us about our, our financial wellness. So we're, we're at the end of the interview and normally we'll, we'll tell you, you know, next, the next week, well, this is our final week. This is our final week of, um, you know, we've gone through all of this, the dimensions of wellness. And if you travel back with us, like two, a year ago, a year ago, we gave you content. We went through all of the con, all of the dimensions of wellness. We gave you a definition. We gave you examples, content, and things that you could do to incorporate those individual wellness spaces in your life and then year two which is where we are now we're giving you people we went through and we're actually giving you people we've interviewed everyone every dimension of wellness has someone that we interviewed right so now what you can do is go back to our youtube channel and look at those individual wellness places spaces that you choose to work on this is a new year 2024 is what this is what eight day eight right so choose either one because sometimes one is could could be a little more much or choose three and go back and look at the content and then look and then connect with that person that can help you you don't have to struggle through these eight dimensions of wellness by yourself because remember, each time we asked, we, we asked different questions, but the question that we asked everyone was how do these dimensions of wellness interact with each other? And everybody agreed that they all interact. So you need to have, you know, a platform, right? You need to have someone that's going to be able to help you. So that's why we did these interviews. So um, I'm excited. This is the last one. Um, I'm looking forward to what uh, 2024 with the Wellness Wednesdays brings, and we will keep you posted. Please stay connected to our website, our Facebook channel, our, our Facebook page, our YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn. So, Ms. Carla, that's, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a journey. It a has wonderful, been. wonderful, wonderful journey. It has been. And first of all, thank you, Sister Samira, for being with us today and sharing your expertise on You're financial welcome. wellness. And Hajadina, so many thanks to you for being our guide throughout this process, not oh, only with pleasure. the content, but also with the selection and of and conversations with people who could 
provide more depth to that information and who can provide support for folks who want to yes. follow up on specific aspects of the journey. So thank you so much for all that you've done to, to guide us along the way. And thank you for watching and for being part of this journey. And as always, we um, wish you wellness and encourage you to get outdoors and enjoy yourself at a park, playground, garden, or other open space. Thanks again.